Many women who are trying to get pregnant or experiencing infertility for a while make the mistake of trying to get advice from their friends, neighbors, or work colleagues who may have experienced infertility in the past and now they've been able to have a child. Now, it's not wrong asking for advice. However, before you do, make sure to find out the exact cause of their infertility. This is very important because if you use their advice or treatment, it could be futility. It may not work for you because their cause of infertility could be quite different from yours. And that is why I'm here for you. Today, I'm going to be telling you six different causes of infertility in women. Knowing these causes will help you to know the right treatment to choose when it comes to the journey of trying to conceive. So here I am for you. My name is Peace Chueze. I'm a registered nurse and midwife, and I currently practice with NHS in England. If you find this kind of information interesting, consider subscribing to my channel because here I talk about fertility, women's health, and everything health. So you're welcome. And so let's get into it. When we talk about the causes of infertility in women, one major cause of infertility in women is ovulation problem. In fact, it is very common when we investigate women for infertility. Now, talking about ovulation, one major problem with ovulation could be an ovulation or having irregular ovulation. Now, talking about an ovulation, that simply means the woman does not ovulate at all. Now, talking about you having irregular ovulation, there is a situation known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. That is PCOS. No, that's the short form. PCOS. So this polycystic ovarian syndrome is a hormonal condition which affects women in their childbearing age. In fact, one in seven women has been found to have PCOS. That is to show you how prevalent it can be and how much of infertility it has caused in many women. Now, this PCOS, one major sign of it is irregular period. So if you want to know more about this PCOS, I've already made a video of it on my channel. You will see where I have a video regarding the difference between PCOS and ovarian cyst because some people think they are the same, but they are different. So this PCOS is one thing that if you have it as a woman, it can cause infertility. Still talking about ovulation problems. Another thing that affects your ovulation could be when you have hyperactive or hypoactive thyroid. So if you're having thyroid problems, it can also inhibit or prevent you from ovulating and of course if you don't ovulate there is no way you can achieve pregnancy finally regarding ovulation problems there is something known as premature ovarian failure and premature ovarian failure simply means a situation whereby the ovary stop working before the age of 40. so if you're a woman and you're less than 40 and your ovaries are stopped working that is premature ovarian failure and this kind of problem can be caused by some situations like autoimmune diseases. We have an example of something called Addison's disease. We also have another thing that can cause premature ovarian failure, something like chemotherapy. I talked about something like this in my previous video when I discussed about male infertility and medications. So I'm also going to talk about it in this video. So this can cause premature ovarian failure. So your ovaries will no longer be able to release an egg and so ovulation cannot occur and pregnancy cannot be achieved. So let's get to the second point. The second point is scarring from surgeries. So this simply means when there are scars that has been gotten from previous pelvic surgeries. When you have some pelvic surgeries, it can leave scars especially in the fallopian tubes and you know that the fallopian tube is like the road or the link between the womb and the ovaries now so if there is a scar a scar simply means when you have a wound and that wound heals it leaves a scar sometimes these scars don't look very good and when you have these kind of scars in the ovary they can prevent the movement of eggs through the ovaries down to the uh, womb that is the uterus so when you have pelvic surgeries, they can cause this scarring. Another one is when you have cervical surgeries too. These cervical surgeries can shorten the cervix, that is the neck of the womb. So all of these can also lead to infertility in a woman. 
The third point is cervical mucus problems. So when we talk about cervical mucus problems, it is common in so many women. Now, this cervical mucus itself simply means that mucus or that fluid which the cervix releases. So it moves down from the cervix down into the vagina. Now, normally how God made it is that during ovulation, this mucus becomes thinner. It's, it's very, very thin, not very thick, but thin. So now this makes it very easy for the sperm to swim through and then go to meet the egg which has been released. But when there is cervical mucus problems, this can prevent the sperm from swimming through to go and meet the egg. And when the sperm cannot swim through because of this cervical mucus problem getting too thick, so this now makes it impossible for the egg to meet the sperm. And so fertilization cannot take place. This is another cause of infertility in women. The fourth cause of infertility are fibroids. Out there, there is a lot of misconception about fibroids. Some people will tell you that if you have fibroids, you can never get pregnant, while others will tell you it doesn't matter. But the truth of the matter is, for you not to get pregnant with fibroids, it depends on the location. Not all women who have fibroids have problems with infertility. In fact, a lot of women have fibroids without even knowing they have it, and they've gone ahead to have as many children as they want but when you have what is called the submucosal fibroids it can cause infertility when we talk about fibroids we have intramural we have the subserosal and we also have the submucosal so these submucosal fibroids can cause infertility because they grow in the layer of muscle that is just beneath the inner lining of the uterus and, and what happens is that they now grow into the cavity of the uterus and this prevents implantation from taking place. So you can imagine a situation whereby the ovaries has done its job, it has released a healthy egg, and the stem cells are there ready to fertilize an egg. Now, after the fertilization has occurred, these submucosal fibroids, because of their location, will not allow the fertilized egg to implant. So pregnancy cannot be achieved. So this is how fibroids can cause infertility in women. The fifth point is endometriosis. In endometriosis, tissue that is similar to the lining of the uterus now begin to grow in other places outside of the uterus. For instance, it grows in places like the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. This causes damage to the ovaries and fallopian tubes, thereby causing infertility. So if you've got endometriosis as a diagnosis, it is important that you seek the help of a qualified healthcare professional in order to get treated. So when we talk about endometriosis, some signs that you could see that could suggest that you have endometriosis are when you have this lower back pain and pain in your lower abdomen. Another sign is when you have pain during your period. Some people even complain about pain during sex and others tend to find out they have endometriosis when they're experiencing infertility. Of course, it is a major sign of endometriosis infertility. So that is it for endometriosis. The sixth point are called pelvic inflammatory diseases. So what is pelvic inflammatory disease? Pelvic inflammatory disease simply means an infection of the female reproductive tract. And when we talk about the female reproductive tract, we are referring to the ovaries, the fallopian tube, and the womb. So these pelvic inflammatory diseases leave scars in the fallopian tube. This makes it very difficult or even impossible for the egg to travel through the fallopian tube. And you know, when this egg cannot travel through the fallopian tube to meet the sperm cells, fertilization cannot take place. So these pelvic inflammatory diseases are usually sexually transmitted infections. So now, it is very important that you seek treatment if you find out that you have a pelvic inflammatory disease. So if you have a pelvic inflammatory disease, what happens is that you need to see your healthcare provider who will give you the required antibiotics for the treatment. Now, when we talk about uh, the treatment of this pelvic inflammatory disease, it is not actually going to reverse what has already happened. 
so those previous scars that are there the treatment will not necessarily take away the scars rather it will prevent further scarring from occurring so it is very important that if you have any form of sexually transmitted infections that you get it treated because not treating them will lead to the formation of these scars and thus make it impossible or even difficult for the eggs to travel through the fallopian tubes so that is a major cause of female infertility finally i have a bonus point for you ladies and that is the side effect of certain medications and how they can cause infertility now when it comes to taking medication and trying to conceive it is very important that you let your healthcare provider know the different medications you are taking this is because the side effect of certain medication can prevent or cause infertility for instance, the prolonged use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen and aspirin, they can also lead to infertility, especially when they are taken for a prolonged period of time or in very high doses. Another one is a medication known as spironolactone, which is usually used in the treatment of food retention. It is expected that when you stop taking this medication within two to three months, your fertility is expected to come back or recover. Then, next is taking illegal drugs like cocaine, marijuana, and the rest. It is a no-no and they can cause infertility. And then finally, taking neuroleptic medications, medications that are used in the treatment of psychosis or other forms of mental illness. These medications can also affect your fertility in the negative way. So, make sure that your healthcare provider have a full list and knowledge of the medications you are taking as they could be negatively impacting your fertility. So let's now talk about the various investigations that you can take or you can embark on in order to detect infertility. Having come to know the causes of infertility in women, I'm gonna be telling you the different investigations that your healthcare provider might want to use to diagnose infertility. One of them is a blood test. Here, your healthcare provider may want to test for the presence of progesterone, which helps in ovulation. So the timing of this test is dependent on how regular your periods are. However, if you have irregular periods, you have to test for gonadotropins, which are hormones that stimulate the ovaries to ovulate. Second test is chlamydia test. Chlamydia, as we know, is a kind of infection which can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease. And so it is very important that you are tested for chlamydia, especially when you are having problems in trying to conceive. This is because if chlamydia is not treated, it can lead to scarring in the fallopian tube and it can cause permanent damage to not just your fallopian tube, your ovaries and other parts of your respiratory tract. So it is very important that you get tested. And in this case, what happens is that they use a swab-like, cotton wool-like stuff, just a very thin thing to get some samples or some cells from your cervix and then it is used to test for the presence of chlamydia. It is important that these tests are done because if they are there and it is not detected and eventually the woman gets pregnant, it can lead to infections in the baby. You can The, the baby can have lung infections like pneumonia. The baby can also have infections of the eye like conjunctivitis. So this is one of the tests that your healthcare provider may want you to undergo the next are x-rays a kind of x-ray known as hysterosalpinogram can be used to look at the ovaries to find out if there is any problem with it look at the uterus and the fallopian tube and it is done by injecting a dye into your womb and then you perform the x-ray then another investigation is transvaginal ultrasound scan here a probe is inserted into the vagina to check the health of the ovaries, the womb, the fallopian tubes. So this is a very important investigation that is usually offered to women who are having problems trying to conceive. And finally, but not the least, however, very important is the history taking part. Last on the list is physical examination and history taking. In physical examination, your healthcare provider takes an examination of your full body from head to toe. So they know exactly what they will be looking out for 
And then when we talk about the history taking, history taking simply means a situation whereby you sit down with your fertility specialist and then you have a detailed uh, kind of question and answer session whereby they will ask you questions about your social history, the kind of lifestyle you have, you know, they also take your medical history. There you may talk about the medications you're taking, any kind of uh, diseases or sicknesses you've had in the past or in the present and various other questions that you will be asked. So all of this will guide your healthcare provider in giving you the most appropriate treatment and in choosing the most important investigations for you to go for. This is really important, especially in places where people can easily go and you know request for any kind of investigation and get it done. So my advice to you is that if you are in this situation, go and visit a qualified healthcare professional, not just anybody, a qualified healthcare professional. Now, they will be the ones to tell you exactly the investigations you need. It may not just be one, it could be two or three. So it is important that you visit them, get tested, and then you will be given the most appropriate treatment for your condition. Remember what I said at the beginning of this video, various people have different kinds of infertility problems and what may be your problem could be different from another person's problem so getting information and treatment from the right source will help to save you a lot of stress and also time it will even help to save your finances because you will be going straight to the point you will know that this is exactly what your problem is and then you will be following a particular treatment plan to solve that exact problem thank you so much for watching today's video if you enjoyed it consider giving me a like and subscribing to my channel thank you for watching and bye for now